Like, cause you know, you ever have friends, Michael, like pull you into something, you know it's not a good idea, but you kind of got to go with right. it because, hey, we a team. That's and right. if one of us go, right. we That's all right. go. Cause even when we'll Derek Carr and Marcus Mariota are, are jogging yeah. to the tunnel, I bet you Mariota's like, dog, that was not a good idea. No. This is not going to end well for us. And you know what? Here's the other thing. He ain't really, he don't know, he ain't a part of the tradition, Mike. I mean, what's he know about Chiefs Raiders? He's been a he's been a Jaguar. He's been a Raven. They knew they had <laughs> lost all 41 the 14 the first time. Here's the Chiefs hey. after this beatdown. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of conversation about it. I mean, but I mean, you definitely don't want people coming into your stadium and trying to like disrespect uh, things that that you've kind of built. Um, and so for us, um, just gave us a little bit more, a little bit more motivation to go out there and, and win against a really good football team that we have a rivalry against that usually is a, a tough, a tough football game. So uh, I think guys were ready to play today, and I think it showed on the field. It doesn't really move me. Um, I don't think champions, you know, really act in, in that manner. Um, so. Yeah, I don't. It don't even matter. So, I, bro, I didn't. I didn't uh, hear about the logo thing until after the game. But um, you know, that, that's pretty disrespectful, you know. Uh, but I'm glad we, you know, we jumped on them the way we did. Michael, I've identified a theme for us, um, to, at least to start today's program, and uh, that's bad ideas. This will be a recurring theme yeah. throughout today's show. It's just bad ideas, uh, bad that's decisions. Good. Uh, former Raiders coach John can I, Gruden can made I the contribute? decision. Can I contribute? I think you are. Oh, well, I, not only do I expect you to do that, but I think <laughs> you'll notice that a lot of those bad ideas um, uh, will gravitate toward my side of the screen. So, okay. have fun reminding me that at one point in time I co-signed some of these bad ideas. But anyway, okay. Uh, All right. Former. Former Raiders coach John Gruden uh, had the bad idea of taking a victory lap after the Raiders beat the Chiefs last year at Arrowhead. So it wasn't like the Chiefs didn't have it on their mind coming into this game. And it wasn't like the Chiefs didn't put it on the Raiders the first time they met a couple of weeks ago, 41 to 14, I believe. And did you know, Michael, that in the story history of this rivalry, yesterday's 48 to 9 curve stomping was the largest margin of victory in the history of Chiefs Raiders, the longest story in the history Isn't that of amazing? Chiefs Raiders. Yeah, that blew my mind. That's that blew my mind. Yeah. But as I'm sitting here trying to unpack this decision, and, and I'm never one to overstate or overrate the importance of bullets yeah. and board material or, you know, pregame antics. Like, nobody remembers what happened before the game. Uh, and because nine out of ten times it doesn't really play out accordingly. Like we try to create this narrative about disrespect and and motivation and fuel, and half the time it matters not when it's all said and done. But this right here, though, <laughs> this right here is like Yannick. Watch back. It's so watch many back things running through my Look mind. Watch Crosby. Watch Crosby. What did right. okay. What did Yannick and Gakwe say that did not resonate once the game was kicked off? And here's what I mean. Here's what puzzles me. And tell me if I, if maybe I'm just so. It's been a while since I played football. I ain't played since high school. Obviously, I never played the NFL. But yeah, shouldn't the team that decides that whatever is being said pregame can only be said for maximum effect at the midfield logo? Shouldn't that team come right. out more fired up than the other other team? Like you would yeah, think yeah, that right, that right, team right, right. would have the exactly. edge when it comes to energy, not the team on whose logo a pregame speech was delivered. So I'm just trying to figure out what fell flat pregame to where it was over after Josh Jacobs fumble was returned for a touchdown and the Chiefs never looked back to the turn to the tune of 35 to nothing at halftime. Like you want to talk I mean, about their first a miss. play. Their first play. <laughs> I mean, essentially, you weren't in it. Uh, you know, they returned it 23 yards for a touchdown and, and it's on. I mean, look at some of this stuff. They were having a good time. Uh, at the at the Raiders expense. Even Josh Gordon uh, got a touchdown there. His first touchdown as a Kansas City Chief. Everything was well. Patrick Mahomes looked like old Patrick Mahomes. But you know, I, I, can I answer your question? I'll attempt to answer your question. I, I alluded to it when we were showing the the video of of the uh, Raiders going there. Their ill-advised decision to go there and have a pregame meeting at the at the logo. Hey, hey, meet me at the logo. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Can you imagine somebody saying, where, where are we going? 
What, what, we going right. to a logo? <laughs> we going to a logo? Okay. We going to a logo. Because I, who, who, I, I, I take the Chiefs at their word. I don't think the Chiefs needed any more motivation beyond playing the Raiders or beyond what Gruden pulled last year. I'm more looking at this from the standpoint of, like, how come all of the Raiders bravado Dude, and is, fire was at the, was, was pregame? Like, like, what happened after this, this where it just none of it translated? But what, you say you answering the question, my, attempted to answer my question about what, what fell flat from here. I, I am. Yeah, I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to attempt to answer the question. It's not the message, it's the messenger. Now, I alluded to it when we were talking, when we were showing the video the first time. Yannick Ngakwe is, is, is a little bit of a, he's become, a, you know, really terrific talent, but he's become a journey. Nomadic. Nomad, yeah. Uh, he, 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 he has. I mean, he's played for a lot of teams. So, to do this, you'd have to, like, if Derek Carr did this, first of all, Derek Carr wouldn't do it, but if Derek Carr did it, maybe there would be some context behind it. I mean, there's certain rivalries that are that are great in the NFL and they have a lot of history to them. And you got to know the history before you pull a stunt like that. This is not just like, hey, the, the Chiefs got a little winning streak going and we we think like we we feel like we're a good team too. They're not better than us. They're not going to uh, overwhelm us. We're going to go out there and we're going to take care of business. Um, <clears throat> This is Chiefs Raiders, one of the great rivalries in the history of the game. And, and Mike, you know, you know, I've, I've talked about this uh, project I did with Bill Cower. Um, and the book came out in, in June and it, you know, there are a lot of great moments of talking with Cower, but one of the things that he kept coming back to, you know, Marty Schottenheimer, the late great Marty Schottenheimer was his mentor. And he said, Marty, when he coached the Chiefs, Marty would just like he would be he would become tearful with talking about the difference between the gleam, Chiefs. Man. Hey, like, he had a, we talk about the Lombardi trophy. Hey, there's a gleam in the trophy and the whole thing. They never his teams never really got that gleam. That's the only thing missing. The only hole in his very impressive Hall of Fame worthy resume. But one of the things he would do when talking about uh, the Raiders and Raiders week, he would just really point out the contrast he'd get very emotional this is a battle of good and evil and he'd believe it like al davis and the raiders yeah. they represent yeah. evil we represent good it's our responsibility to give our best against the i mean against the raiders he really was into it and admit and, and the players would respond and he really enjoyed regular season and they beat them in the postseason those were right. some of his his greatest moments you got to bring that kind of energy and bring that kind of perspective if you got to pull a stunt like that, and let someone say, and here's the other thing I'll say before I pass it back to you. Let someone say, come on, what's the big deal? This is one of the things I like about all professional sports that rivalries still exist. When rivalries exist, that gets me excited. Whether it's hockey, Canadians, Bruins, Yankees, Red Sox, Dodgers, Giants, uh, Raiders, Chiefs. I love those in you know, Auburn, Alabama that you can have that type of passion at the professional level, even with all the money involved in the game and people say these guys are mercenaries. They don't really care. I like that a small thing like the logo, a meeting at the logo can spur these guys into I don't, but I don't think it did that. No, I look like, again. You don't think I, it did? I don't think no, that's what that's my point. My, my, my takeaway from that ill advised decision is not that it further fired up the Chiefs. You know, as we heard a minute ago, some of them didn't even know about it. I mean, the fans some certainly, know. Some you know. know. Yeah, but fans were still, booing. I, I, I think we overstate how much teams are disres. How much these are professional football players. You know, I mean, there, there mm. may be some level of of added edge it gives you, but not enough to make a forty eight to nine difference in a game. This to me is more reflective we'll talk about the Chiefs having revealed their true selves momentarily, but just I'll, I'll say this last thing about the Raiders. This is more reflective and exposes who the Raiders are not who maybe we got lulled into thinking or, or fooled into thinking that they might be when they started three and oh and obviously yeah. they've had all kinds of crap going this year from John Gruden to Henry Ruggs, uh, you know, to uh, Arnett, uh, you know, it's just it's just been one thing after another when it comes to this franchise this this year.
but really they don't have the guys to back up the tough talk. They, they were tough talking tough to one another at the logo. This just goes to show that whether it's Mayock, Gruden, Mark Davis, whoever you want to point point the finger at, this roster just mm-hmm. don't they don't they're not about that life. They they can't walk it the way that they talk it. Pre and post game. We mentioned Derek Carr, friend of the show, Derek Carr says all the right things after every game, but they talk it a lot better than they walk it. Meanwhile, That's right. Kansas City, good luck trying to crack double Watch digits out. against against this team. And I'll give you props. You've been saying this for a while. I was a little more skeptical. Bad, it was a bad idea on my part. I didn't write them off, but I doubted them. Now, granted, this was my preseason pick to go back to the Super Bowl, given everything they did Hold along the pick. offensive line in the offseason. Mike, Mike, you should remi- be reminded. Hold the rope, Mike. Hold the rope. You should have been. Hey, hey that, that was good advice. You didn't take it. Hold the rope. I, on d- the Kansas City I, d- I doubted whether they would actually find their way. Because what I never saw coming was a defense that the last three weeks has given up exactly nine points every week. And an offense that has its moments specifically against the Raiders, but still doesn't quite look like Kansas City. You know what I mean? They 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 they, they had some balance going yesterday. The running backs got in on the action. Mahomes was efficient, did what he had to do. But Chiefs as a defensive juggernaut was certainly not something that I would have predicted at any point this year. Not early in the year when they had maybe the worst defense in the league, if, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Um, but I, I made the mistake, bad idea, of, of doubting whether the Chiefs would figure it out. Not only have they figured it out, I'll at least say that I gave myself some wiggle room. When I anointed the Patriots a few weeks back as the class of the conference, I did allow for Kansas City. Like, if, if there was one game to be played, I was like, yeah, yeah I, I have a hard time picking against Mahomes, given what that offense is capable capable of, and that defense the way that it's playing. Uh, at least I gave myself that out because right now Kansas City looks like it's headed back to the Super Bowl the way that defense is playing. You know what? In the defense, you, you, you'll like this. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the story in a second. You being a draft Nick, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, and you know how I feel about safeties in general. Based on my uh, Madden history, <laughs> one of my great, one of my favorite all-time fictional players uh, was the safety that took it the first round. Anyway, we'll get what was, there. It, what we'll was get his there. name again? Gotta, what was his Mo name Roberts. Mo, Mo Roberts. Roberts. Mo Roberts. Mo Roberts. Yeah. Twelfth pick in the draft, Hall of Famer. Anyway, <laughs> but I would say to you, I'll say, if you look at all Memories. the great fun times, defenses fun times. throughout history, throughout history, you know. We always talk about, I guess, a, a great face of a defense is like a, a snarling, perhaps toothless Jack Lambert middle linebacker as the face of, of a defense, whether it's a great defense. Jack Lambert, Ray Lewis, those kinds of, you know, Mike Singletary, that guy, that look, the crazy eyes for Mike Singletary. But I would say that if you look at all of the great defenses, if you find a great defense, I'm sure there's a great safety there. Somehow there's a great free safety, great song, strong safety on that defense. Maybe a cerebral mm. guy who's also athletic, playmaking, all of that. I think all of the, all a, of them a have quarter, it. A quarterback in the secondary. Yeah. Quarterback. And so yeah. I'll, I'm going to get there in a second. I'm going to tell you why I, I brought that up. But just say overall, Steve Spagnolo, his defenses, when he's got – when he's got a talented, I think he is a defensive coordinator, uh, and, and, and that's not a slight. He's a really talented defensive coordinator, head coach. I don't know about that, <laughs> but if he can get his defense, give him some time with the defense. His defense, his defenses tend to do special things, and that's and it's been that way throughout his career. You can look at some of these uh, ferocious, really creative defenses. It's not like he just does one thing. He's able to adjust. He's able to figure out what the offense is doing and can shut it down. He knows his personnel very well. So props to him props to his entire defense. But I want to point out we both know Lionel Vital. Remember, you, you know, Lionel Vital mm-hmm. Vital yeah. uh, scout has scouted for uh, for many yeah. teams scouted for the Jets, the, the Patriots, uh, the Ravens. I happened to look the other day at a scouting report that Lionel Vital gave me about Whatever, Matthew. Ten years ago, uh, about yeah, 
about uh, whenever he was drafted, right before he was drafted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The scout and I, re I read that scouting report. And I said, "Oh my!" I mean, he had it down. He was saying uh, uh, how this is a guy you'll look at him. He'll never be the biggest guy on your team. He'll never be the fastest guy on your yeah. team. But he's somebody you will follow. You feel like you'll draw off his energy. He's instinctive. He's always around the football. Uh, very smart. A leader, your football team yeah. is better when he's on your side, and and that's exactly who he's been throughout his career. Whether it's with the Cardinals or or now with the Chiefs, the Chiefs it are crazy. They don't sign this guy. The line. Sign him. Sign him. It was never between sign the him lines. Sign him long term. Even it, we, I mean, his his ability was obvious at LSU. It was never oh, yeah. between the lines right. with him. It was yep. all. It was only his quote unquote off the field issues that you know got him up. Uh, kicked out LSU and uh, had him uh, tumble uh, in the draft. So looking forward to seeing what the Chiefs do down the stretch because short week turnaround at the Chargers uh, with the division on the line. Remember the Chargers won the first one yeah. at home against Pittsburgh day after Christmas and then at Cincinnati and at Denver to end the season. So wow. Imagine imagine them not only running the table, but having their fingerprints all over the playoff picture uh, in the AFC. This is not only going to be a Those team. Those are some tough games. You know, I, I hate all it when people say I, I, one of the oh, no, they are, but but all winnable at this point. I, I, I would take Kansas City in all of those games, including uh, at Los Angeles on Thursday night. The way the defense is playing in particular. I, one of the many cliches I hate is that's a team that nobody wants to play. Well, if they're in the playoffs, it stands to reason that they're probably good. You know, teams that backed in, notwithstanding, but they're probably good if they're in the playoffs. Number one, number two, I want to play who's ever in the playoffs because that means that I'm in the playoffs. So yes, I want to play them. You know, like I, nobody wants to play them. I'm like, okay, well, we, we ain't scared. However, the Chiefs right. are that team right now that just that, that that seems to be putting it all together, peaking at the right time, with still room for improvement. And if they get battle tested with this remaining schedule, and who knows, maybe end up with the top seed in the AFC. My preseason Super Bowl prediction of another uh, Bucks Chiefs uh, Super Bowl may not look so bad after all. Hey, thanks for watching, brother from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.